My clients consist of uh, 300 head clients down to the pet cow owners. Still, uh, my average herd size is probably about 75 head. We've got uh, 65 cows to artificial inseminate. We'll try to rock and roll out of here. All right. All right. Ready, Ray? Yes, sir. All right. Artificial insemination is a practice that a lot of lay people practice. What it allows my producers to do, they can procure semen and use it to you know, make big leaps and bounds in their genetic capacity of their herds without having to buy that bull. We've been using it extensively in our practice for years and years. 27 ale. When veterinary medicine first started, every veterinarian worked on food animals. Now, less than 20% are involved with food animals. So, yes, we do have a shortage. There is very much a shortage of practitioners. Some great students that come down, student workers, really love mentoring them. If you're thinking about being a food animal practitioner, you will have to be very proficient at artificial insemination, and that only comes with practice, practice, practice. We're going to get another one in here, and then let's walk, walk me through it, tell me exactly what you're doing. All right. Russ, tell me what you're doing right here. Working with uh, vet students is very enjoyable. Probably one of the more enjoyable parts of my profession. I followed a lot of my students through the years. In fact, I have one teaching uh, vet school now at AM. AI technician here learning to, well, not learning, he's on the job. We've got the uh, area strip through Texas, runs right through this central Navasota area. I'm told from the panhandle feeders, it's probably some of the best cow-calf genetics in Texas. Uh, to me, I wake up and I feel like it's a challenge to me to show that owner that I'm worth what I do for them. I like that aspect of it. Really good.